Hey, listeners, what's up? It's Jeff Zimfer, your humble host and chief truth teller at the Mortgage Marketing Radio Podcast. So glad you've tuned in. If you're a first time listener, thanks for being here. If you're a long time listener, hey, much appreciate you. And I want to give a quick shout out to one of our loyal listeners, Andrew C. Andrew writes, another awesome show. Another great show from Jeff. Oh, thank you. You always provide great guests and drill down with your questioning to get real usable information that I can implement into my mortgage business. Thanks. Keep the great podcast going. Andrew C., if you're listening, you're the man. You get a podcast swag t-shirt coming to you. How do you get one? Hey, just hit me up on Facebook, message me. Let me, uh, I got to get your mailing address and your t-shirt sh- size, or you can always email me directly, podcast at Mortgage Marketing Radio. So thank you for your reviews. Keep the reviews coming because that helps us reach more people and know that we're making a bigger difference for you. And frankly, it just feels good to connect with you guys and know that this passion project is uh, making an impact. That's what it's all about for you, making a difference in your life and your business, bringing you relevant information, tools, and resources to help you succeed in your business. So speaking of that, let me tell you about our sponsor. As you know, our parent company is the Mortgage Marketing Institute and under that umbrella exists resources, several different resources. One that I want to point you out to in case you've not been there yet is I have a free ebook for you, a guide, if you will. It's called the ultimate guide to teaching agent classes. The number one way to get more agent referrals in less time. You could copy of that couple ways you can get that. One, you can go right to the homepage at mortgagemarketinginstitute.com and you'll see right on there is uh, an image of the book with an opportunity to click a link, get the download and grab that ultimate guide to teaching agent classes. It has been downloaded hundreds and hundreds of times and it is consistently, as you know, one of the primary ways that top producing loan officers succeed in attracting and capturing realtor referrals. So once again, that's mortgagemarketinginstitute.com. Uh, I will put a link in the show notes. Just go there and grab the ultimate guide to teaching agent classes. All right. So let's get into this week's show and my special guest. So uh, I'm doing something a little bit different here today. I wanted to mix it up a little bit. As you know, I often do that to keep it interesting and relevant for you guys. And uh, this is dealing with the conversation of, uh, you know, looking at two different types of businesses or a hybrid type of a business. And what I mean by that is, right, there's the traditional type of business where, you know, hey, going after real referral partners, that kind of stuff. And then there's what often people would consider, a, you know, an alternate way to build your, to, to build your business, right? And that would be lead gen, right? Buying leads, paying for leads and that, those types of things. And um, my special guest, uh, you know, he and I have a unique connection together, actually. Uh, his name is Blake Bianchi. I'm not sure if that name is familiar for some of you, but it is for me because when I was at Countrywide back in 2003, uh, for about six years there, uh, his dad, John Bianchi, was my regional director. And uh, John Bianchi is a stud. Um, he was uh, at one time one of the top producing loan originators in the country. I forget exactly his volume. I mean, we're talking back though in the 2000s, right? Um, and it was, it was huge, right? Well, I'm talking hundreds of millions, millions of dollars a year, hundreds of loans of units per year down in San Diego and was um, a visionary in a lot of the ways that he uh, built his business and built his local brand uh, and his team uh, down there in San Diego. So it's kind of great to kind of reconnect and realize that the industry is still a very small industry. But I'm having Blake on because Blake and I had a conversation about a week ago, and uh, he has built a business that is a hybrid business, meaning he started his business. He's only 25, by the way, right? So for the, anybody who's listening that might be younger and up and coming in the business, that might be a great episode for you to kind of dig into. But he started out, he's only been in the business about uh, three years and started out, you know, uh, as many people do, and that is pursuing real estate agents, right? Um, and built a, a pretty good stable of real estate agents as referral partners there. But also, and this is really kind of the core of why I had uh, Blake on the podcast, is he's also diversified his business sources and started investing in purchasing leads. Um, for quite a while, he was actually buying long form Zillow leads and doing quite well with those. Um, and obviously since uh, Zillow has acquired a mortgage company, he noticed some changes in you know what's happening over there and decided to pull his investment away from Zillow spend over there and invest in buying leads from places like uh, LendingTree, Bankrate, NerdWallet, 
uh, and some other places. And so I wanted to have Blake on just to have kind of a candid conversation around the two different types of businesses, um, you know, referral based, local, uh, relationship focused versus online lead gen, perhaps a you know, more transactional, less loyal, if you will, which he admits to as well. And just unpacking kind of what you can expect if you're at all considering buying leads, perhaps, and, and what you need to have in place, the systems, the processes, what you need to be prepared for, um, because he's, he's actively doing it, right? But um, I also thought there might be an opportunity for some of you listening that might want to dip your toe in the water here, um, because for... Um, for Blake uh, investing about a thousand bucks a month, right? One to 3000 a month. I mean, he's definitely getting a positive ROI on that in terms of, of, of loans closed. And he's also set up a pretty unique system in reversing the process, which I think would be interesting for you guys as well. Meaning he wants to now feed real estate agents with pre-approved buyers, right? Everybody talks about, hey, that's the holy grail. That's what agents would love from lenders. Well, he's doing it. Right. And so, and yet he's, he's early in the process. And I want to make it very, very clear that we talk about the mistakes most of you listeners, loan officers make when you're deciding to, whether it's even, you know, uh, spend money on ads, whether it's uh, buy leads from these different portals, don't do it without having the proper understanding of the different style business that that is. And secondly, don't do it without having your operations drilled in, meaning your systems and policies. Don't do it if you don't have a CRM to automate the immediate reach of texting and phone calling and, uh, uh, you know, various other elements that those types of buyers expect response. And you'll hear Blake talk about how he saw differences in the drop-off rate and the conversion of those leads um, when it went beyond a few minutes pretty interesting. So it's a nice kind of, you know, candid conversation. Is this going to be right for everybody? No, but that's one of the things I want to make a point about when it comes to lead generation, right? What works? The, the $64,000 question, hey, what works with lead generation in the mortgage and real estate business? You want the truth? Here's the truth. Everything works, but not everything works all the time or for everybody everywhere. So it's situational, right? upon who you are, the type of business you want to build, and what works in one area might not work in another area. What works for one person might not work for another person. Yes, principles remain the same, tactics change, and that's why I wanted to talk to you because these are some tactics that may or may not be relevant for you, um, and at the least, start to think about you know, down the road if you want to kind of start to pivot and look at some more consumer direct activities. Um, some ideas for you around that. So hope you find it useful. Wanted to mix that up a little bit on this. And I got a lot of respect uh, for Blake in terms of what he's doing, right? For being a, a young stud man, he's only 25 years old. Um, pretty smart, getting after it. It's going to roll him off his dad with some great coaching there. But um, that's it. Let's get into this week's show. Blake, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. You bet, man. So really thrilled to have you. And uh, thanks for reaching out. Uh, it's funny. Um, you know, it, when you connected with me, obviously, it's a last name, Blake Bianchi, for those who don't know, let's just full disclosure right now, you, um, you and I have a unique connection. Uh, your dad was my regional manager when I worked at Countrywide, man, back at the day, 2003. So the fact that you and me are talking is like crazy, unbelievable how it's such a small world. So tell the listeners, Number one, how old are you? How long have you been in the mo uh, mortgage business? Sure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm 25. I've been in the industry for, this is my fourth year. Um, so I started getting, getting into production about uh, two years ago. My first couple of years were just um, in, uh, working on a team and kind of assisting and, and learning the process. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and then last year I became a broker. Um, so that's when I transitioned over. Okay. And uh, yeah, ever since just working on, on building the business. All right. You became a broker. So that's interesting. That's on a lot of people's radar these days, right? Uh, the resurgence of the broker yeah. market. W why did you make that choice? <clears throat> yeah, I think for me, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people that I was working with that had, weren't um, in the same age bracket as me didn't, didn't always get questioned as far as um, pricing goes and, and consumers were getting a, I feel like consumers were getting a lot smarter about how they shop for a mortgage. Um, so for me, I kept a list of how many loans I was losing versus how many I was keeping. 
Um, and the list on the, on the losing loan side got a lot bigger than the other side. And so for me, you know, at a certain point, you, you want to try something new um, just to see what the difference is. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when I, I became broker. Um, and still, you know, even becoming broker, there's still other obstacles um, mm-hmm. that, you, that, you don't, that you don't get from, that you don't have on the retail side. Um, but overall, I wanted to try a, a low price model um, and see if that would help me build my business. Okay. And you think it's made a difference for you? I do. Yeah. I think, um, you know, this time last year, um, I I only had about, uh, maybe $2 million in closings. Um, right now I have about 6 million in in closed so far and probably another three or four this month. So Mm -hmm. yeah, for me, it's, it's, you know, my business is skyrocketed because of that. Um, and, and it goes back to um, Anthony Costa did a post um, a couple of days ago about uh, customer acquisition. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, the, the whole idea is to get the client in, give them the best deal. Um, and then the referral after that is three or four people. Um, so for me, it's, I'm, I'm, right now I'm getting a lot of referrals, um, whereas before I didn't get a lot of referrals. So, um, yeah, I, I think that it's helped me a lot. Well, so that's an interesting topic of discussion because there's a number of directions I could go hearing what you just said, right? Uh, and I'm sure some listeners are probably having a similar thought pattern in their head about, well, well, there's multi- multiple reasons, and I know you know this, but there's, let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room. There's, there's multiple reasons as to why you may not be getting a referral um, that can have to deal with price might be part of that. Obviously, customer sure. experience, process, service, post-close, all that kind of jazz. But, but, and I don't want to hang out here too long because that's not why we had you on the sh- have you on the show. But um, are you saying then that you? How, I'm trying to I'm trying to articulate this. You just feel you've got a stronger value proposition because you've got you think is a you've got a much better price offering being a broker. Yeah, and and I and I think that it's more than just pricing, right? Uh, it comes to client experience, um, how, you know, operations and everything in between, not just pricing. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and so I, I think I had that client experience pr- pretty good um, the way I wanted it to be as far as, you know, video and automation and, and touch points. Um, and, and the pricing was where I was missing out. Um, so when I threw that in there, finally, then everything took off. Mm. Um, but I do think that I do think that customer retention and, and all that does come from from, you know, follow up and things like that. Because you hear a lot of brokers that, you know, their clients w- got called by Quicken Loans after they closed or something and, and they got refinanced and, they're mad at Quicken because they call their client. But I think for a broker, um, it comes down to retention and how you follow up with your clients and, and the experience you gave them during the process. Um, Cause you know, 99% of my clients aren't going to go refinance somewhere else. They're going to call me first and say, Hey, I got this mailer in the mail. What do I do? Um, so yeah, I think that pricing does help, but it's more about the experience. Yeah, hundred percent. And so yeah, I'll play devil's advocate with that a little bit, right? Um, because they're going to get that mailer regardless, right? If they're at a bank yeah. or, or broker. So it all does come back to you as the individual professional to build a fence around those clients. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, let's pivot to why we really brought you here. Uh, number one, because you're probably I'm trying to remember you, you might be the, uh, and this is all props to you, man. So I hope you take it the right way. The youngest guest I've had ever on the show. All right. Uh, Cause you know, the average age of an LO is like 50 something, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you are, you are this, this group of people that I love that you're coming, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, the younger folks, so to speak, that makes me sound so old. So I apologize, but you know what I'm saying? We got a whole new influx of people coming in who never went through the meltdown, right? That me and your dad went through and all that kind right. of stuff. Um, and you guys are bringing like a fresh set of eyes and attitude to the business, which is cool. And so why I wanted to have you here is because we're going to get to this in a moment, but um, we're talking about consumer direct and online lead gen and a conversation around that. Now, before we get there, though, I think the other thing that I wanted to bring up and talk about, which I think you are wise enough, you've probably had some good coaching, um, wise enough to recognize is that you first started out building a referral based business from real estate agents primarily, right? Right. Now, was that intentional was that like you know hey you're speaking to to to, you know you're getting some guidance from from your dad in that case or why why was that your route yeah i I think you know the traditional loan officer has always been taught the model of uh you know calling your top 40 i I took the core training as well um and and it's all about prospecting right time blocking Mm -hmm. prospecting 
you know, how many agents can you call in a day, who are your A, Bs, and Cs. Um, so that, that's, that's the way I was, uh, you know, that's the way my dad did it. And so I didn't reinvent the wheel. It was more like, let's get, you know, you have to have the basics no matter what in this business. Yeah. So you're, you're time blocking, you're calling. Um, but yeah, that was the way I, I started out my business and, um, and it, it was good. It, you know, it takes a long time to build trust, um, in, in a highly competitive market too. Um, so yes. You know, it, takes, it, it took me a year to break into my first couple of realtors and, and, and some are, I'm on my third year now and just breaking in. So it takes a long time to, to get that business going. Um, yeah. and, and, and so for me, I needed to figure out a way to, to grow it quicker. Um, cause that was always the goal to, to grow quick. Um, and so that's when I started, you know, doing a little bit more consumer direct and kind of researching how to implement that side of the business. Um, mm-hmm. And, and also use it to help grow my referral business. So Yeah. And to be clear, so you, you said competitive market. Are you in San Diego? Yeah, we're yeah, in Southern California, we're in San Diego. Right, okay. Yeah. So obviously a very competitive market there, much like it was for me in Orange County. Um Okay, so, and you've done pretty good with, with the, the realtor uh, referral business thus far. Um how have you found that to be, by the way? I'm curious, uh the journey, the road. How would you describe that? <laughs> Yeah, we all love realtors. So, um, <laughs> is that yeah, sarcasm? I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm more selective on who I work with now, um, yeah. only because, you know, in the beginning, you're trying to get everyone that's a big, huge net, you're trying to fill it up, um, and you get burned out. Um, and so, you, you know, I, it's almost easier to grow your business when you pick the right people to work with, too. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I love realtor business. Um, you know, you just got to find the, the right people. Yeah. Um, and, and also, you know, uh, participating with them in marketing and doing things like that. You, you want it to be with someone who has the same vision as you. Otherwise, mm-hmm. uh, things just don't line up. All right. So um, you mentioned something last time we talked. Um, you ran up against some resistance against agents. One of the things that I wrote down that you mentioned is, was there a perception issue because of your young age from these? Because, real- again, most realtors are 50 plus. So you had to come up sure. against that, right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, in initial meetings and things like that, um, it, they may not say that, um, exactly, but you, you feel it. Um, and, 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 I, and it makes sense, right? Because you got loan officers that are 50, 60 years old that have been doing this for 20 years. And then you got, a, you know, a new guy coming in has only been doing it for a couple of years telling you he can do everything the same, the same. Mm. Um, and, and we both know expertise takes a while to develop. Mm. Um, and, and I, I think I developed it pretty fast. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's always the, the age issue. Um, so I try to figure out ways to add value to, to, to come, you know, come back at realtors with more value, um, mm-hmm. where they're willing to take a shot, a shot with me. Um, and, and when they did, then we could perform. All right, man, let's, let's, uh, let's go through a little routine here. I'm sure you got it pretty wired. Sure. Uh, how did you get realtors to kind of give you a shot? How, you know, how did you kind of position value, aside from great rates, great service. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think as the market continues to change, um, marketing is becoming a huge piece. Um, and a lot of uh, realtors don't have that, have that down yet. Um, so my, I guess my value add was, Hey, I can show you, you know, how to get the website bill. I can show you how to design these, you know, your postcards and who to go to and how to print them and, and kind of just do the whole, you know, marketing angle for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, at, at, the, at the, at the same time, this was about, uh, Two years ago, um, I also started uh, with Zillow, and so I had a, a lot of Zillow leads coming in. Um, and whenever, whenever I got someone that didn't have an agent, um, I basically told the other agents, "Hey, you know, if you want to be, if you want to work with me and give me an opportunity, then I'll give you clients in return." So uh, we were we were trying to funnel our Zillow leads back to to the agents that would give us opportunity, mm-hmm. um, and that that was a huge value add because a lot of the realtors are used to the, to the loan officer calling them and just asking them for the business, um, right. but not, but not giving them anything in return. So, so I want to make sure I understand that. Were you already deciding then to, uh, what were you doing? Buying long form leads on Zillow? Uh, yeah, at that time it was long form leads on Zillow and, uh, we were doing op city too. Op city was a, a lead gen company. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that one didn't work out as well. Um, good conversion for us, but not, not for handing it off to realtors. Zillow, 75% of those people that came through Zillow didn't have a realtor. So that was a good opportunity for us. And, um, again, I don't like, you don't have to get specific, but roughly what was your spend on those Zillow long form leads? Um, we spent a thousand dollars a month on Zillow. 
And, and for that, you would get roughly? Um, you get, they give you a range, maybe 20 to 30 leads. It, it all depends on loan amount and, and uh, where the, the area they're buying in and stuff like that. So that changes the price. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how many of those roughly were able to convert? So, so you're getting 20 leads, a thousand bucks is what I heard, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many, somewhere how many in that range. Were? How many, how many, you know, you know where I'm going, man. How many, you, um, you've got yeah. your numbers, app, yeah, close, I, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think uh, contact rate uh, with online lead gen, especially Zillow is, is about speed. Um, yeah. Yeah. We almost got, we got about 50% of them on the phone. If we called them within 30, 60 seconds, within the first minute they came through. Mm-hmm. Um, if we waited five minutes or more, it was about a 15, 20% conversion rate as far as calling them and getting them on the phone. Um, so yeah, it it goes way down, um, when you wait and if you waited a day or so, they're already being hammered by so many lenders that they're, they're not going to answer your phone anymore. Um, so what's your goal on that first first call? Are you, are you going for an app? Uh, you know, a lot of call center people, um, try to take the phone app, uh, you know, over the phone when the lead comes in. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, I think it's a little much. Um, I, I like to feel out what the consumer is looking for, right? Uh, mm-hmm. If they're just saying, hey, you know, I'm trying to figure out what I'm pre-approved for. Perfect. I'm just trying to, you know, give them a good idea, give them the link to my website, to the, the digital application and kind of and guide them uh, mm-hmm. more as an advisor than trying to get their app. Because um, a lot of these are, these are purchase leads. If, if they were refinance leads, then I take the app right there and try to get them going. But with purchase leads, you don't want to be too pushy because it, it, it's almost a turnoff. So, um, I, I try to provide value and then put them on, you know, a drip campaign and, and follow up with them and, and, and hopefully convert them. Okay. Um, and have you shifted your focus on Zillow since they've uh, become a mortgage company? I've hundred percent shifted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it, it could just be me. Um, but I, I saw the, the quality of, of the contact they're sending over um, get diminished a little bit when, when that stuff started coming about. Um, and, and since then we've seen articles, right. On, uh, a lot of the co-marketing leads are going to the realtors and they're already pre-approved by Zillow mortgage, mm. um, which, you know, makes me hesitant to even want to do co-marketing on Zillow. Yeah. Um, just be, because I, you know, it, I don't know, it's just one of those things where you do want to feed the, the machine that's going to run against you. Um, and I, I just don't see it. So. Well, do you still have any investment in Zillow, whether it's co-marketing or, or otherwise? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. All right. I'm just going to have my, my notes here from the last conversation. Um, so you're totally yeah. off Zillow. Um, but that kept you afloat for quite a while, but now you've shifted your online lead gen, uh, investment to a couple other uh, sources, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've shifted it over. So, um, we're, we're going to be doing lending tree. Um, we're working on integrations with, uh, bank rate, um, nerd wallet, hopefully coming up soon. Um, and then some, uh, some online other ones for VA and stuff like that. Cause we, all the bases are here in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're not going to give up consumer direct and, and, and what it comes down to is, um, you know, you meet with a, a lot of these agents in this area, top agents, and you're, you come to find out that what they're doing is consumer direct themselves, right? They're going to Zillow, they're going to, to Redfin, they're, they're going to all these different places to buy leads. And so, and they want you to come in and co-brand them. Their business isn't as organic as it used to be. So then I got to think in my head, is it worth it to, to buy leads for them, with them, right? Co-market or just buy them myself and, and basically run my own consumer direct. Mm. Um, so, you know, I want to keep the, the cost of a, of, of a client to, uh, acquisition to about a thousand bucks or, or less, hopefully. Um, and then when you start looking at the realtor business, it's two or 3,000 or more, you know, it almost doesn't make sense for, to partner with some agents um, because the cost is um, is more than if I did it myself. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're going to keep ramping up our, our consumer direct model. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, and it, it's different for everyone. I think it works well for us because we're running a low margin. Um, and so we're making a lot less per loan than, than normal, you know, traditional loan officers and, and some of our competitors. So for us, it's about volume, not about, um, you know, making the most on each deal. So we have to do a lot more volume. Mm. Um, but that, that helps with consumer direct because our conversion is a lot higher. Well, let's talk about this. Uh, you mentioned volume. And so uh, I, I, I don't want to overlook the importance of having the right systems and infrastructure in place when you're talking about consumer direct online lead gen. Um, what, what 
for those listening that can, that are considering this, considering ad spend, right? Whether it's a Facebook ad or whether it's buying from a portal, like you mentioned. Um, yeah. What are the requirements that people should have in place to, to even consider that? Yeah, it's funny because I, I, I hear a lot of other brokers saying the same thing. I'm going to go buy leads. I'm going to do this. But you, the, the main thing that you have to have set up first is the system um, to, to handle it, right? Because otherwise, uh, when I first started doing Zillow leads, I didn't have the system. And I lost a lot of money that I probably could have made if I would have been had a system to funnel it better. Um, so the first thing I would say is before you even start buying leads is you have a CRM um, with automation. Um, as soon as a contact comes in, it needs to send an auto, automated text to them, automated email, maybe even a voicemail. Um, mm -hmm. And you got to keep track of those, that conversion um, because when you start buying leads from all these different sources, you got to figure out which ones has the highest conversion so you can dump more money into it, right? So if Letting Tree is outperforming NerdWallet bank rate, well, I'm going to put more money into that. Um, but yeah, automation is key. And then as you ramp it up, you got to have a, a, a CRM that you can distri distribute your leads to your team. Um, because there's no way for me to sit there and handle 500 to 1,000 leads a month. It's not possible. Right. Um, so I need to be able to ha hand it off to a team that I know that I can trust that will call right then. Um, but yeah, I would say that the main thing is the system, the CRM is, is the most important thing. And so you're focused on purchase leads then for buying these leads, right? Yeah, I'm focused on purchase leads. Um, you know, I, the reason why is um, I did a lot of refinance leads the last couple months, and, and it was great. We, I think we locked 15 loans in the last two weeks. Um, but um, it doesn't add value to the realtors. And as, as rates go up, there's going to be less refinances, and it's going to be a purchase-heavy market. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got to start building that pipeline up and, and purchase leads. Um, and, and with that too, we want to be able to give back to the realtors, you know, that we're prospecting the big accounts. Hey, you know, we can refer you two or three buyers a month that are pre-approved, um, and adding that value because the, you know, the agent, the value to the agent is going to be more than if we partner with them and did co-marketing or anything like that, if we can give them two or three buyers a month. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, my goal is to, to ramp up those purchase leads, get them pre-approved and then hand them off to our realtors. How do you decide to yeah, the, the distribution strategy with your realtors and those leads? Um, if that makes sense, the question. Yeah, yeah. Our distribution strategy is uh, first, we want to make sure they're pre approved. We're not handing out leads to our agents. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, a lot of these teams already have the leads that they're buying and they got to have their call, their, you know, their, their team calling them. Okay. So we really want to hand them something that's, that's ready to go. Um, we created a website, um, it's an agent referral platform. And so what happens is we, we put three agents per county on there. Right now we have three, three in San Diego, three in Orange County, and three in Riverside. And basically what we do is when we're talking to a client, we're figuring out, you know, more about them, who they're going to use for their, their realtor. And if they're not using anyone yet, we send them a link to that URL. And we say, hey, you know, read, read the top, our top three agents that we work with on here. Um, one of them is one of the biggest agents in San Diego. You know, they're going to have a lot of a lot more um, uh, tools to help you. You know, off market properties, things like that. Just just higher touch points. Um, and and a lot of times, uh, the client is going to look for. They already trust us with their finances, so they're looking. They're open to referrals from us because um, we they now came to us first. They trust us. We're handling their finances. Who do they, who do we recommend that's big for for them? Um, so then we can we can push them to that URL and they can pick between the realtors on there and, and they don't have to work with anyone on there, but they can and they can click to work with them and it should send an automated text straight to the agent and say, Hey, you got a new lead from the Bianchi team. Uh, you know, claim it now, call them. Wow. That's interesting. Um, are you able to share one of those URLs, the website? Uh, almost. Yeah. <laughs> we work. It, it's, uh, it's, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Yeah, we, nice. um, so the, the idea, new one's man. built. Yeah, the new one's built, um, but we still got to uh, put some of the new pictures on there and stuff like that. And so if I send you there now, it's a bunch of random pictures and random people. No, that's okay. Maybe we, maybe we can get a, you know, a, a look back on this when it's, when it's ready for prime time. Um, yeah. But again, uh, how did you choose those three agents to go on those, you know, the websites? Yeah, I mean, um, it comes down to who do we want to partner with and who's in, you know, one, they have to be they have to be good at what they do. That's the most important thing, right? They have to help the client. Um, the main goal is to help the client get them into a house and, and, and provide them with that that fast uh, support. 
And so um, that's the main criteria. Um, the ones that are on there are people that we're, we're working with. Um, if it's, you know, um, uh, one of them is Dan Beer in, in San Diego. Mm. Um, and, the, and, and, you know, he closed 300 transactions last year, 304, I think, or 314. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's got a, a team of, you know, 20 people. So mm -hmm. we know that the client's going to get the service they deserve by going there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so that's good for us, good for the client. And also, it, you know, it helps with our relationship with Dan Beer too, or right. wh whatever realtor we have on there, because we're now giving them a lot of value. Yeah. So I'm glad I, I asked you that very intentionally, obviously to explain how you select the three agents that go on there. Um, it sounds like you've already had some previous engagement with them. You've, you've got a, a relationship. They, they yeah. likely have already sent you business, right? Yeah. They, they've likely sent us business or we've worked with them before, or, um, I mean, we, we do have people on there that we've never worked with before, mm. um, that wanted to be on the program. And, and that's great because it's an opportunity for us to give them a client, perform on closing that client and show them what we can offer. Um, right. and, then, and then try to earn the rest of the business. All right. No, so that's interesting. It's people that you've not worked with before. How does that come to play? Are, are, are some of those agents that are on your target list, you're reaching out to them saying, hey, we've got this you know, system set up and uh, we're generating leads and we've identified you as a top realtor, blah, 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 blah. Tell me how that kind of unfolds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if I was a realtor and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to think of the, of the realtor mindset, you know, you've got 25 lenders hitting up all day, you know, let's get coffee, let's get this, let's get that. Well, my email to them is going to be, hey, I know you, you get hit up by a lot of lenders. I got something that they can't offer you, and I have buyers to give you. Um, do you want to be on this platform? You don't have to, there's no requirement for it. We just put you on it. You can start re you know, receiving stuff from us. Once we show you value, we sit down with us and have a coffee. And every time they're going to say yes, right, because it's a free buyer. Why wouldn't they do it? And, mm -hmm. they're gonna, and, and we're, we're going to end up performing, and they're going to end up sitting down with us to have a meeting. And so it's okay. kind of our way of showing value up front. Yeah. So by when you say showing value, that means giving them a, a buyer that's ready to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Give them a buyer that's ready to go, you know, and, and okay. it's free money to them. They didn't have to pay anything to, to market that client or anything. No, no, I just want to clarify. Um, but the agents that you're choosing to go after with that proposal, they're obviously successful agents, high performing agents, right? Yeah. I mean, we have, we have on, on, on that spectrum, we have, everything right we have people that are doing 10 deals a year up to people like dan that are doing 314 a year so it just uh, it depends but yeah i mean we we i think that people are gonna get a better experience from a top producing agent because they have a team set up and, and they can handle the the, the yeah. client better the systems are better yeah but you but you said it's three agents per city right yeah three agents per city so do you also have any discussion with them around or is there is there any discussion around quid pro quo, meaning, hey, I'm, I'm going to flood you with some leads, and if you're not getting any love back from them, do you then have a little chat, or is that kind of set up up front, or what? No, no we, we don't do that. It's just, uh, you know. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me, man? <laughs> Come on. Now we're, we're recording. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> we, uh, I'll tell we, you, bro, uh, it's, all, it's all straight up here. Truth, truth in mortgage marketing. That's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No, you know, if, if they're closing the client and their conversion's high, um, that's the most important thing to us because that's how we're going to get the loan and we're going to get them into escrow, right? Um, I mean, obviously, it makes sense. We'd want business in return. I, I mean, if, you're, if we're working with you, we're doing a good job and you're getting our buyers, um, it, it would only make sense to partner with us and, and to give us your business in return uh, well, because we're going to do the, the same thing for your clients. Yeah, one would hope that 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 uh, you know it's the right agent who gets that. They're, oh my gosh, the Bianchi team has flowed us like six six loans in the last you know forty five days. You know, hey guys, we got to send the Bianchi team some business, right? I mean, that's that's kind exactly. Of yeah. Yeah, and it's it's like um, I can't remember the 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 term for it, but you know when you do something for someone else, they feel like they need to do something in return for you. Reciprocation. So. Yep. <laughs> Comes out of a great book called Influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini. Um, I like it. Yeah. So listeners, Hey, we'll put that in the show notes too. Why not add you a link there? <laughs> uh, okay. Very, very cool. Uh, uh, the website idea is very interesting. Very interesting. Cause now I'm also thinking about it from the standpoint of, you know, how realtors would play that three card approach. Well, you're kind of feeding it back to them now, right? You're playing the three agent approach. 
Right. And, you know, a lot of, you know, you talk to a lot of realtors and like, oh, yeah, you know, I refer my buyer to the, my top two lenders or my top three lenders. They can choose who they want. Well, you know, we're going to refer them to our top three realtors and they can choose who they want to. Um, and, and you know, it, it's the same thing, you know, Loan, Deep, Loan Depot does the same thing and so does Quicken. And uh, and a lot of these companies, they have, you know, Mellow Home or mm-hmm. I can't remember what Quicken, Quicken is, but they're, they're giving, um, you know, their, their pre-approved buyers out to realtors too. Mm-hmm. Um, um, they're asking for a referral fee in return. Um, we're not asking for anything in return. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we just want it to be easy for the client where they can come get pre-approved, get connected to the top realtor or, you know, realtor we work with easily um, and, and just get in, in, into the home with, you know, with ease. So yeah. that's really the goal. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, is this the new wave of uh, modern mortgage marketing? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I think that consumer behaviors are changing. You know, um, they're, a lot of them are going online. A lot of them are 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 starting their sh- through you know Zillow or Redfin or wherever they're going. Um, and and we need to change our, our the structure of our business to to handle that. Right. Mm. Um, things can't be done the same way they've always been done um, when things are changing. Mm. So I, I try to I try to develop that that online stream, mm-hmm. um, but also keep it keep the basics because those are always going to be there. And yep. so when you can leverage one for the other and, and kind of, you know, implement both, then you have a winning strategy. Yeah. So that's very smart. Obviously you said, keep the basis because they're always going to be there. And I, you know, so I still, it's funny, this whole lead conversation and, and we did touch on this earlier, but I also want to make it clear for the listeners is that what, what, what you've done first, Blake, is first you built the foundation of the basics. I'm wondering, if, let me just put it this way, candidly, would you suggest somebody go about it the opposite way and just try to go straight up? buy-in leads, you know, which is now part of your business. Um, yeah, I would, you know, if I were, if I were to do this three years ago, I probably would have sank all my money into buying leads. Um, if I had the system there and the rates and everything that the, the consumer wants, right. The consumer, the consumer that's going online is looking for guidance, but they're also looking sometimes for the lowest rate. That's their only goal. Um, and so when you have all these things in place to, to give that person what they want, I would have just went straight for that. Um, and you know, it's funny because the, the, the owner of loan factory who's in San Jose is all consumer direct. Um, and that's how he started. He, he built a, a good system, a good website that does the rate quotes and does everything automatically. Um, and then he, he does all radio and, and newspaper. He doesn't buy leads online. Um, and it works for his market. It's a niche market and it works for him. And, uh, you know, he, I think he's got 200 loans in the pipeline right now, um, with no realtors. So. I think it's totally possible to build a, a, a huge business and be a top performer um, without, without working with realtors. Um, it's just, you gotta, you gotta choose which route you want to go consumer direct or realtor, or if you want to do what I'm doing, which is a hybrid model, mm. you can do both. Um, it, it's just a little bit more complicated. So. Yeah. And also the reality of, of my listeners, right? You're referencing your broker there. Um, that's obviously it takes some pretty significant budget uh, to do that as well. To, to, for 200 loans, I think he's probably got a pretty sizable, call center staff or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's got, um, I want to say he's got 10 people under him, something yeah. like that in San Jose and Orange County. Yeah. Um, but his, surprisingly his ad spend is, is, uh, a lot less than buying leads. Um, he does the Vietnamese radio station and, and Vietnamese uh, newspaper. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he's been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, and he's just, I think last year he did, a, um, like 150 million, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this year he's already done more than that so far year to date. So um, I, I think consumer drug works. You just got to find your niche, what you're trying to, what you're going to try to do. And, mm-hmm. and then, um, you know, do it, do it smart. Have you tried to run um, Facebook ads? Um, I've tried to do some Facebook ads um, and I, and I, and I find the quality of the lead to be a lot lower than like lending tree or um, you know, uh, Zillow stuff like that. Cause a lot of the funnels are just basic questions. People are just clicking. Um, so you, you have to get, you have to get a lot more leads to, to equal, um, you know, an application or a closing versus buying them from online. Um, but they work. Um, I've also tried radio too. And radio didn't, I got zero results from radio. I got no calls, no website clicks, nothing. Um, yeah. so, um, I don't know if it was a, the ad I was running or if it's my market and my niche was just too big. Like, you know, I was just doing uh, the country station here in San Diego, broadcasting it to everyone. There was no real point to it, except for we had the low rate um, and it didn't work. So it works for him in San Jose and Orange County and Texas. And they're doing, you know, hundred loans a month 
and but that didn't work for me. So um, I'm I'm back to lead buying, and I think that that works best. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Uh, it, it really comes down to something I was writing about this morning is, you know, the big question of, well, wh what works in marketing, right? And the real answer is um, everything works, but not everything works equally well all the time right. or for everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, totally true. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, all right. So let's see here. What um, you got the website, you got the realtors. How would you, let's say this. Okay, so my listeners are, are primarily relationship focused, use the air quotes traditional, if you will, right? Much like you built your business at the start, realtor referral and that kind of stuff. What advice would you have for somebody? Because I think a lot, there's this conversation every loan officer gets. They understand they want to go consumer direct and diversify and not be reliant on agents 100% and flip the value prop, which is what you've done. So, looking back to you on how you get started and now you've got, you know, listeners that are in the same boat. Um, a couple of quick tips for them to, if they're considering looking at buying at, you know, investing in ads, lead spend, where, how would you direct them to get started? Yeah. So first I would say get the system in place to handle it, right? Mm -hmm. Get your CRM in place, um, contact the company you want to buy leads from, figure out what they're integrated with. Cause a lot of, a lot of them are integrated with certain CRMs. So you got to have whatever one they all connect to. Mm -hmm. Um, big, big, big purple dot is a, is a CRM that provides lending tree bank rate, right? all those and Zillow. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say get that set up first. Um, if you're, if you're a big realtor business person, um, and you, you know, that also requires being out in the field a lot. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be available to call these leads. So you, you got to have someone that you hire to be, uh, you know, answer the phones and be in the office and do this. It, it, it's, it's too hard to, to try to do both. Right. Um, so, um, even though I have a realtor business, I'm in my office sitting at my desk 90% of the time. I don't get up. Um, and so I'm able to take the leads and stuff. Um, but they got to have the system and they got to have, um, someone to take the leads and, and um, really have what the client's looking for. You got to have, you know, the the infrastructure. You got to have the, um, you know, the process has got to be good for them. It's got to be something that that they want to do, um, easy for them. Digital mortgage, you know. Um, and then you also got to have the price for them. No, that's a great point you just rose there. Uh, it's got the process, something they want, they want to do, a digital mortgage. I assume most of these people, because they're inquiring online at uh, Bankrate and all that, they probably already have that expectation of a good user experience with a digital loan app. Yeah, they, they think they do. Um, and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, they, they do, they want to get a pre-approved. They want to move forward. They're not sure where to go. Um, but it's our job to show them, Hey, here's, here's our experience versus, you know, the five other people that are going to call you, um, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and really it comes down to, to ease, you know, Quicken Loans is the, is the number one lender in the country. And it's not because they have the best pricing. It's because they have a, you know, click, click button, get mortgage and clients want that, the, the ease, you know? So if you can give them that, that comfort of, you know, Hey, it's a digital mortgage process. We're going to, you know, less documentation. We'll try to verify your income and assets for you. Um, we'll do everything quickly for you. And uh, also here's the rate we're going to give you. Um, that makes them want to want to move forward and apply with you. You know, um, they want to hear that it's going to be easy um, or, you know, streamlined for them, not, the old school way of, you know, bring me all your documentation in person. We'll scan it all in. Let me write down your whole 10 or three on a piece of paper for you. They, they, they want the, the new buyers want the ease. Uh, which goes back to a point you mentioned earlier. A very critical part of your sales process is that initial phone consultation where you position yourself as uh, a trusted advisor, right? Yeah. You're not a phone call guy. You're not a rate jockey. You're a trusted advisor that wants to understand their needs, wants, dreams, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to understand, you know, because I feel like a lot of the call center reps that you see at uh, different lenders, they don't, they don't go into depth about what you're trying to do, right? How long are you gonna live in the house? You know, what's your goal? Uh, did you know if you do it this way, you, you can save some money? You know, so you're always trying to figure out ways to advise them mm -hmm. and help them. Um, and and another thing is, uh, you know, when we when we do quote rate, we're not like, hey, what are you getting from other lenders? Tell us, you know, we'll beat it all, you know. It's hey, here's our rate. Here's the best we can do. If if that's something that you think is valuable, you know, if if what we're providing you is valuable enough, you want to work with us, we'd love to get that locked in for you and help you out. Um, but we don't want to position ourselves when we're talking bad about other lenders or or trying to to do that sales pitch because I think that's like a 
you know, it's like a used car salesperson. We don't want to be that. We want to be um, helpful and, and, and help them save as much money as we can. How long is your initial conversation uh, off of that lead when it comes in? You know, you want it to be, you want to, you only have a couple of seconds to earn their trust usually in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. So you want to, you know, connect with them locally, you know, tell them, you know, I had one yesterday, she lives right down the street from me. So I try to connect with her on that stuff, the weather, whatever, you know, what are we trying to do for you? Um, but my, my initial conversations are, are only about five, five to 10 minutes long. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't sit on there for an hour with them. Um, because, you know, they, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think consumers, I wouldn't want to be on the phone for an hour with someone mm -hmm. that I applied, you know, on, online for, um, I want it to be quick and easy and text me or email me all the info you just told me, um, which is what we try to do. Um, so it's really just, uh, you know, the initial five minute conversation, let's hit it off and then let me send you an email with the recap. Do you, with, with these leads, would you consider that a relationship or transactional style of business? Uh, relationship, you know, the, the goal is to, to help them as much as we can provide a lot of value. Um, mm -hmm. And our goal is to, you know, one thing, there's a, there's a mortgage funnel, right? You get them in the lead, you incubate them, you convert them, you do their transaction for them. And then that's where it stops for a lot of people. Um, and they, they don't know where the client's at. They go refinance with someone else you know, it's transactional, let's get more in, let's get more in. Um, but you can make, you can increase your business 30% or more if you just keep track of those people and manage your mortgage for them. Mm -hmm. um, right now I'm, I'm refinancing 75% of my pipeline from last year. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, that's business I wouldn't have if I didn't follow up with them or didn't make it a good experience. So um, yeah, going back to what you were saying, I think it's super important to manage those clients. Yeah. So what tools do you do, do you use to manage that, stay top of mind, all that? Yeah, so we have a couple of things. We use uh, e, e Property Watch is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. E Property Watch will send them a report once a month with um, the current value of the property, things that have sold in their area, their current loan balance. Um, just gives them a lot of uh, tools. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is our our CRM will do automation to them. Um, the first month after closing, asking for reviews, seeing how things are going. Um, three months, you know, a maintenance checklist. Here's what we think you should do to your home. Keep keep it up to date. Um, six months, we'll ask for a referral from them. Hey, we have, you know, hope everything's going good. Do you have anyone we can help? Um, and then we always do a yearly checkup too, just to say, hey, it's time to check in. Let's see how you're doing. Hmm. Um, so I think I think those things, um, you know, you, the, the whole goal is to stay in front of them, right? After closing, how do we yeah. stay in front of them? It doesn't, it, it can be something just like a, you know, a, hey, how are you? Um, but we want to keep it going and for as long as we can because they're going to refinance when rates drop or they're going to have a friend or family member that wants to buy. Um, yeah. And you can, you, can, you can have all the automation set up to do it for you. You, know, you don't have to be thinking about, oh, today I got to email these 30 clients. Have it all automated and you don't have to do anything. So, Do you do any kind of like a, you know, annual mortgage reviews or do you plan to, you know what I mean, to get that kind of personal call every six months or whatever? Yeah, we do. We do a personal call on the on the yearly checkup. Um, mm -hmm. That's like our mortgage review, annual mortgage review. Um, mm -hmm. Just to touch base, see where they're at. Let them know, hey, here's where rates are at. You know, you're still you still have a really good rate, or hey, the market's dropped. It's, you know, maybe we should look into refinancing you, um, and, and things like that. So yeah, we do our our, our yearly checkup. Okay. Um, with these leads that that are purchase leads from like these sources you mentioned. Do you, as, as you compare those leads, the interactions with them, the loyalty, the, the double apping you factor, right? Do you notice any difference in those leads as compared to the referrals from real estate agents that comes? Keyword, yeah. keyword loyalty. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's different, right? Because, um, you know, like last night I had a, a client that was close to close the day that backed out last second and, and you just don't understand it. And, and the reason is because there's no, you know, you haven't met them in person. They didn't come from someone you trust. It's not a real referral. So I would say the close ratio is a lot lower on online leads versus realtor referrals, right? Mm -hmm. um, when they come from a, a realtor, you know, 99% of the time they're using you. That's who they're going with. Um, it's a trusted transaction. When they come through online, it's, it's a lot less. Yep. Um, so, you, you know, you do a lot a lot higher quantity of, you, you know, you throw 15 loans in the pipeline and maybe 10 of them close mm -hmm. um, versus you throw 15 of the realtor ones in there, you're going to, you know, 14 or 13 of them will close. 
Right, right. Interesting. And I'm glad you uh, mentioned that and articulated that. And I brought it up, obviously, for a very specific reason for those listening that might be, you know, kind of feel drawn towards the online lead gen thing. And, and look, like we said earlier, um, not everything is right for everybody. So you got to get clear on what kind of business you want to have as well. Um, so, and there will people, who, there will be people who succeed, have succeeded and will continue to succeed even without ever paying for a lead. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, the top, uh, you know, the top loan officer in San Diego, um, is all, all relative referral. So, um, you know, the, some, some markets, you have people that are top, they're consumer direct. That's all they do. And they're number one. And then there's people that are referral. So, yeah. um, you know, I don't know if, if, uh, if I was 100% referral, if my business would be down or up, um, you know, it, I, it's getting harder for realtors too, right? It's getting harder for them. And so, you know, as if their business is going down, you know, putting all my eggs in a realtor basket is not going to be that good. Yeah. Some are going up. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to supplement it by doing consumer direct because that's yeah. something I can control. Yeah, no, man, it makes it, it makes a lot of sense too. And you know, I, I evaluate if I was getting back into the business today, I would want to diversify to a degree as well. I'd want that like foundation of a referral business that I know, um, uh, you know, uh, sustains or how, how can I better better weathers the storms of markets, yeah. you know, cycles up and down. When you've got that, when you've got that strong referral base, right? that seems to be a little bit more smoothed out than being directly affected by the market, things like that. But both make yeah. sense. I mean, let's, let's face it. Cause look at the, the behavior of people moving online and stuff. So yeah, that's awesome, exactly. man. This has been a great education in those who want to get started with online lead gen, whether, you know, whatever that looks like for them. Thank you for sharing kind of the, uh, the truth, man. Right. And, uh, and I appreciate you just, you know, being willing to take whatever questions come at you. So I think this has been a nice yeah, lesson for the listeners. Um, yeah, for those who want to reach out to you, where do you recommend they go check you out, man? Yeah, you can go, you know, in, you can Instagram me. It's uh, the Bianchi team. Uh, that's my Instagram. That's my Facebook handle as well. Um, and, you, you know, you can call me as well. Um, I, you can probably post my phone number or something. Um, but I'm fine with that and, and trying to help as many people as we can. That's awesome, man. All right, we'll put links in the show notes and uh, to your Instagram profile, to um, your, your webpage as well. I'll get that from you. So anybody who wants to continue the conversation can reach out. Mr. Blake Bianchi, legend in the making. I appreciate you making yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. You bet. And listeners, as always, we appreciate you tuning in and listening. If you like this episode, you know what to do. Leave us a little love on the interwebs. And, uh, you know, that means a review if you like it. All right. So uh, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, people.